Have you heard the phrase small talk before? Small talk is the phrase we use to describe polite conversation about unimportant and uncontroversial matters. So you might make small talk with one of your friend's parents or with someone you went to school with that you haven't seen for a while. It's polite and it prevents a situation from feeling awkward or uncomfortable. Small talk is very much embedded into the British culture. Hello everyone, Anna here from EnglishLikeANative.com, the site which helps you to speak English with confidence. And for those of you who would love to have an English accent, you can download my free guide to Sounding British just by clicking on the link below. Now today I'm going to talk you through 50 phrases that you can use to make small talk with someone you've met before. Let's get started. Fancy seeing you here. This is a phrase that we would use when we see someone unexpectedly. Oh, fancy seeing you here. If you run into an old friend at the supermarket far away from either of your homes, then you might use this phrase. It's commonly used sarcastically too, as a joke when you are fully expecting to see someone and it's not shocking at all. For example, if you run into a friend at the same supermarket at the same time every week and you go, <laughs> fancy seeing you here. <laughs> Number two, it's good to see you or it's so good to see you. This is a polite way just to say that you're happy to see someone. Number three, it's great to see you again. You could use this phrase when you're talking to someone that you don't know very well and you might not see very often. Again, to express that you're happy to see them. So make sure you only use this phrase when speaking to someone you have met before because you're using the word again. Number four, very simply, how are you? When making small talk, it is polite to ask somebody how they are. In British culture, we tend not to share too much about our emotions in response to this question with people that we don't know very well. Many people just see this as a polite question rather than a genuine one. So if you're having a bad day and you bump into someone that you kind of know and they say, how are you? They don't want to know about your bad day. They're just being polite. So just say, yeah, good, thank you. <laughs> Okay, number five, how are you doing? How are you doing? Or how are you doing? This is very similar to how are you, but with more focus on how you spend your time. Really, you can answer this question in many different ways and steer the conversation towards whatever you'd like to talk about. How are things is another one, another vague question. So it's one that you can interpret in lots of different ways. The word things, in this question could refer to your family, your workplace, your studies, almost anything else. Use context cues to help you work out what the person might be referring to. And if you're still not sure, just pick a topic and go with it. Number seven, hey, what's new? This question can be used to ask about what's the latest thing that's going on in a person's life. About, oh, well, I started a new job recently. Or you might say, nothing really. Everything's the same as it always is. Number eight, how long has it been? This question refers to how long it has been since you last saw that person. You could reply with an event where you last saw them and estimate how long it's actually been or even use the phrase, oh, too long. It's been too long. I've really missed you. <laughs> Number nine, Similarly, you could say, it's been too long. Oh, hey, how are you? It's been too long. You could use this phrase when you haven't seen someone in a while to express that you'd like to see them more often. Number 10, let's not leave it so long next time. This is another similar phrase, which you might say when saying goodbye to someone. It means that you'd like to see them again sooner than when you saw them last. So if before you left a five-year gap, 
then this time you'd probably like to see them in a couple of weeks instead of years. Number 11. The last time I saw you, you were about to move house. How did that go? You can change, obviously, the context about to move house for anything you remember about that person's life from the last time you saw them. It shows that you paid attention and that you remember the previous conversation and it gives that person an opportunity to tell you more about their life. Number 12. Did you end up moving house? This can be used if there's something that that person was considering doing the last time you spoke to them, but you're not sure if they followed through with it. This again gives them an opportunity to talk about the decision that they made, what their reasons were, and what's happened since. So it's a good way to start a longer conversation. Number 13. I remember you were planning to move house. How did that go? This is another similar phrase, but with slightly different wording. It shows that person that you remember the last conversation you had with them and you're interested to know more. Number 14. I heard you were moving house. You can use this phrase when a person did not tell you that information themselves, but you found out through a mutual friend or someone you both know. Perhaps you saw it on Facebook. Again, this encourages them to tell you more about their life. Number 15. I saw you were moving house. So this is a phrase that we're hearing more and more often because of the use of social media. You might have seen this on a Facebook page or on Instagram that they were moving house or about any other life event. And you can use that as a way to make conversation. Number 16. Did you hear about Eleanor? Obviously we can swap the name Eleanor for the name or phrase which summarizes some of the recent news you might share an interest in. For example, if you both know Eleanor and she has just announced that she's pregnant, then you could say, did you hear about Eleanor? Number 17. You'll never believe this. You can use this phrase before saying something particularly shocking or unexpected, typically while gossiping. You'll never believe this, but Ellen is pregnant <gasps> with her boss. <gasps> Number 18. Are you still working for Google? Obviously, again, swap out the company name for whichever company they were working for the last time you saw them. This gives them the opportunity to tell you about their work. Or you could say, are you still with Google? It's another way of asking the same question. Do they still work for the same company? Number 20, how is it going at Surrey University? You could use the name of a school, a college or a university, or the name of a company that they work for. How's it going at Google? Number 21. How's business? This is a more vague question, which is appropriate in many different scenarios, but it's a fairly safe bet if you want to ask someone who is self-employed or a freelancer, um, if you want to ask them about their work life. How's business? You could also say, how's work going? How's work going? Again, this question is very vague, but it allows the answerer to steal the conversation towards any particular part or aspect of their work that they feel comfortable discussing. Number 23. How are your studies going? You can use this question to ask about school, college, university, or any other form of education. Number 24. Ah, that's great. This is a polite way to respond to good news, to show that you're happy for them. Here are some other options. That's wonderful. That's amazing. I'm so happy for you. It's so good to see your hard work paying off. Now this one can be used if they have been working on or towards something for a long time and it's working out well for them. Congratulations. Use this when someone tells you about a personal achievement or milestone, like I got my degree or I got the job or I finally uh, moved up to the next level in my English learning. Congratulations. 
This is always plural in English, so remember that. On the other hand, let's look at a few phrases that you can use when someone tells you about bad or disappointing news for them. You might say, I'm sorry to hear that. This offers your sympathies in most situations. So you can use a modifier to increase the intensity to suit the situation. For example, I'm so sorry to hear that, or I'm really sorry to hear that. Other phrases are, oh, that's terrible, or that's awful. Use these phrases when someone tells you their bad news to show them that you sympathize with them. Oh, I lost my job and my car got stolen. Oh, that's terrible. You could also say, no way. This is a colloquial phrase that we use in English to express shock or surprise. You could say, my husband cheated on me. No way. Number 34, I just can't believe it. Use this phrase if someone tells you something that's really shocking, bad or disappointing. I can't believe it. Your father died, that's, that's terrible, I, I can't believe it. Number 35, well, I hope everything will be all right. Be careful when using this phrase because if used at the wrong time, it could be seen as dismissive. Reserve it for the end of a conversation. Well, I hope everything will be all right. You might use it in response to someone saying, things have been a bit tricky at work recently. I might get made redundant. The business isn't doing well, but I'm not sure. So you'd say, well, I hope everything will be all right. I'm here if you need me. Okay, number 36. Please give my regards to Stephen. This is a formal phrase. To give or send regards means to send well wishes. You could use this to refer to a person who's not present at the time, like that person's partner or a friend that you would normally meet up with. So, oh, please give my regards to your wife. Please send my regards to your boss. Please give my regards to your mother. You could also say, say hi to Stephen for me. This is the more casual version of that phrase. Again, use this to send a message to someone who's not present, but who the person you're speaking to lives with or has regular contact with. Number 38, how are the kids? This one is fairly self-explanatory. You're just asking, after someone's children, are your children okay? How are the kids? Number 39, how's Stephen doing? We use this phrase to ask for more information about someone you know or someone you know of that's not present. So perhaps if I know that your partner has been unwell recently, I might say, how's your, how's, how's your partner doing? How's Stephen doing? Number 40, what are the kids up to? Now you can change the kids for anyone's name or for any other group of people like your parents, your students. And this question is used to ask what those people have been doing recently or what that person has been doing recently. It's a great way to open up a longer conversation about those particular people. Number 41, those glasses really suit you. Now, you'd use this phrase when you want to give someone a compliment about something specific they're wearing. So you can change glasses to anything else they're wearing or have on them, like that handbag really suits you or that coat really suits you, that dress really suits you, that shirt really suits you. If the object is singular, we use the verb form suits. But if the object is plural, we use the base form of the verb suit. So that coat really suits you. It's singular, coat, so we use suits. Or you could say those shoes, plural, really suit you. Next, you look great. This is just a general compliment. You look great. You look really well. Number 43, I'd better let you go. Now you use this phrase to end a conversation in a polite way. So this is a polite phrase to show that you respect their time and to bring a conversation to an end. Ah, you're off to a job interview. I better let you go. Bye. Number 44. I'd better be off. I'd better be off. 
This is a more polite way to say, I need to leave. Oh, it's at the time, I better be off. I've got to be back at work in 10 minutes. Number 45, it's been lovely catching up. Say this to show how much you've enjoyed your conversation, but to imply that it's now time for the conversation to come to an end. Number 46, we should do this again soon. You can say this to express that you'd like to see that person again soon and to continue your conversation. You could follow it up by making a plan to actually see them again. So you might say, what about next weekend? So this is to suggest a day when you could see each other. Next weekend can be swapped for any other day or time. What about tonight? I'm going to a party, would you like to come? What about on Wednesday, four o'clock? Number 48, good luck with the new job. So you can bring the conversation back to something that you've been talking about to show that you really paid attention to the conversation by wishing them luck with something which might be difficult or nerve wracking. Number 49, have a lovely holiday. So use have a lovely when talking about a specific event like a holiday or Christmas or a birthday or even just their weekend. If they've said they're looking forward to the weekend, they're going to have a barbecue with their family, you say, have a lovely weekend. Number 50, have fun in Italy. Use have fun in before a place or have fun with before a person or event. This is just saying, I hope you have a good time. So there you have 50 common phrases that you can use in small talk. Do you have any more options for making small talk in English? Please share your ideas in the comments below. Thanks for joining me. I'll see you again soon.